the heart of South Africa. Nestled among farming settlements near the small town of Lichtenberg, there lies a small fairy tale pond, a fountain, the place where the Mariko River draws its source. This is the Mariko Eye. Descending through the eye's crystal clear waters on a sunny day transports you into a magical new marine world. surface, African water lilies display their elegant white flowers. Beneath the water, meanwhile, their stems have created an enchanting underwater forest. A labyrinth. Pierced by shafts of sunlight. These plants, rooted to the bottom of the pond, provide a habitat for a number of animals. Small schools of kerpa fish search for food among the lilies. Nearby, a freshwater crab cautiously checks its surroundings. Even a koi fish, most likely released into the wild by humans, has found a way to survive in this idyllic pond. But possibly the most intriguing member of this little community can be found hiding away in the darker corners. Here, the tiny Mariko barb forages in the sediment. A mere eight centimeters long, these fish occur exclusively in the upper reaches of South Africa's Mariko and Crocodile Rivers and are listed as vulnerable on the Conservation Red List. Members of the barbel family take their name from short barbs around the mouth which house the taste buds and help the fish to locate food on the pond bottom. Dwelling in small streams, the Mariko barb can be elusive by far your best chance of an encounter is right here, at the Marika Eye itself, which supports a small but healthy community. Little to no natural predator threat, the barb's survival depends mostly on the quality of the water it lives in. A compelling reason to preserve fountains like the Mariko Eye. As we leave this beautiful jewel and follow the Mariko River's slow path through South Africa's parched interior, another small natural wonder has quietly been taking place for millions of years. As water runs over dolomite, the rock absorbs calcium, gradually forming a tufa waterfall. Mosses growing on the rocks in the stream 
extract carbon dioxide from the air via photosynthesis. This, in turn, solidifies the waterborne calcium, and the resulting deposit is called tufa. The formation process is sensitive to chemical changes in the water and also relies on sufficient turbulent flow. Tufa waterfalls, which are home to various unique habitats, are also extremely rare, and of the handful scattered around the world, there are just two in South Africa.